Hey guys, so welcome to my next tutorial and this is going to be about showing you how to make a zip line. Now I got the, asked this um, quite a long time ago now when I actually first created this channel and also you know wanted to make it myself because it was one of those things that I thought I've seen in a lot of games and I wanted to try and achieve it so I spent a little bit of today just this morning you know working on something um, to make it work for everybody. So this, as ever, I say, they're always pretty basic, and you know you can change these ideas however you like. But I'll just show you the basis of what um, the core elements are. So if you imagine and you look at my scene, I've got a first burst controller. I've got my test scene. I've got I've just got a box um, so you can stand on to begin with. Now what I've got here is I've got another box in front, but I've made sure that the collider is um, much bigger. So I've just increased the Y value so the collider goes all the way up so when you stand in it you'll obviously be able to activate the zip line or whatever you like to do. And I've made sure that the is trigger is ticked. So you know when we walk inside we can actually detect when we've walked into it. Now this um, cube here, that cube and this line are rather redundant in a sense that they're only for a visual um, look. Because we're not going to you know grab any hands on and slide down, we're just going to basically use the FPF controller and change the position over a period of time. So I've also got another box at the bottom which you'll need to create which is just called my end point. And obviously you can actually hide this because you don't actually need it to be there. It's just we want to tell the player where we want to end. So as long as you've got the first burst controller, a collider which we can walk into and then the end point then we'll start writing the script. So first of all what we're going to do is create a new script create a new JavaScript file and call this zipline then what we'll do is open up Mono Develop, and once this is open I'll zoom in a little bit and what I'll do, you'll notice that my Mono Develop might look different this time is because I've changed the um, syntax layout so we actually get um, a more contrast so when you're looking at my videos you can actually see what's going on in it more easily so first of all what we're going to do is delete the two functions and write variable end pause for end position as type transform and have that as a semicolon. And then we're going to write our own function called use zipline and then we're going to add two curly brackets below and then use variable time as type flow set equal to five variable elapsed time as type float equal to zero variable starting pause as type vector three equals transform dot position with a semicolon and all these are going to do is we're setting the um, a time value to five we're setting a time which we're going to elapse over a period of time to zero and we're setting our starting position whatever our transform position is so fairly simple to start with then we're going to write while open brackets elapsed time is less than what time is equal to and we'll close that up and add two curly brackets below and then we'll say transform dot position equals vector three dot lerp open brackets starting oops make sure that's lowercase starting pause comma end pause dot position comma open brackets elapsed time divided by time, close up the two brackets and put a semicolon. Then we're going to say elapsed time plus <clears throat> plus equals time dot delta time. And then we're going to write yield with a semicolon. So I'll quickly go through what this means. So what we're doing is while the elapsed time is less than time so while elapsed time is equal to zero so it's below the five we'll actually be able to do the movement of the position so what we're actually doing is elapsed time is counting up every second or so or every frame 
which means that it'll eventually get to the value that we want but for every um, portion of time that we're still sat counting up then we're going to change our position vector and lerp means it'll move gradually from the starting position to the end position over the time of which elapsed time is divided by that amount of time so really it just takes the two values and as long as time st as long as elapsed time is still below it will move to the end position so obviously what you can do is you can go to your first person controller and add your zipline script then what we want to do is add our end point to the um, inspector there and then what we need to do is actually make sure that we can actually activate this so we'll create another javascript and call this activate zipline and once that's open in monodevelop what we'll do is write private variable zipline script as type zipline with a semicolon then we'll say function start open brackets open the two brackets and say that zipline script is equal to game object dot find open brackets add quotes first person controller close that up dot get component open brackets um, zipline close that up and then under there we'll say that function on trigger enter open brackets call colon collider and then we'll add the two curly brackets below if call dot game object dot tag is equal to player close that up then we'll add two curly brackets below now what we want to do is create another variable so we'll create a private variable um, can zip for instance and have that boolean equal to false and then what we'll do here is that if we have gone inside the um, collider with the player we'll say that can zip is equal to can zip with a semicolon and we'll write a little function below here say function update what we'll do is we'll write if can zip and and input dot get key down open brackets quotes f close that up then what we'll do is we will be able to do zipline script dot use zipline two brackets and a semicolon what we'll actually change this to is if can zip is equal to true so here I just wanted to make sure that um, everybody understood that so once in the update function and that is set to true we'll say if it's true and we press F we'll be able to call the other function which is use zipline so what we'll do is if we go into our game make sure that the script is on the collider that you want to walk into press play and what we'll do is you can see my little debug because I added something at the bottom it's currently equal to false if we walk into the collider it sets it to true then if we press F you'll see that your position starts moving towards the block at the end and it obviously wasn't perfect you might want to move this block slightly further down but for the sake of you know just a simple zip line um, it works very well what you can also do is in your zip line script if you wanted things to move faster or slower so say I add time to as equal to 2 and save that what I could do is actually do it in the um, editor if you made them all public but now if I play it and walk into the collider and press F will move a lot quicker because we don't have as much time to go in between so obviously you can adjust that accordingly for how quickly you want to go so obviously the bigger the value the slower that you will go because the further you've got to travel in terms of the smooth speed so that's pretty much it for the tutorial on how to create yourself a simple zipline so as ever thanks very much for watching and don't forget to like comment and subscribe cheers